so today we will study the ovarian cycle and menstrual cycle before that we will just revise the structure of ovary so we know that the ovary is lined by germinal epithelium so the outer lining of the ovary is germinal epithelium it is cuboidal epithelium and it is misnomer it is not the or means it is not giving rise to the germ cells though it is called germinal epithelium it is not giving rise to the germ cells of the ovary so it is misnomer after the germinal epithelium you have the tunica albuginea so there is tunica albuginea just after the germinal epithelium okay then you have the outer cortex and inner medulla so in the cortical region of the ovary you can see the follicles at various stage of development right from primordial follicle to the primary follicle it will further mature uh, there is appearance of cavity so you can see secondary follicle mature graphene follicle and corpus luteum so these all uh, rhythmical changes occurring in the cortical region can be seen and in the medullary part you mainly have the blood vessels in the form of sinusoids and few smooth uh, muscles are also seen in it let us study the ovarian cycle so the ovarian cycle is of 28 days on an average and in these 28 days rhythmical changes occur in the ovary so the primordial uh, this primordial follicle is converted to primary follicle then the cavities will appear and it will form a large antrum folliculi it is filled with leaker folliculi then the secondary follicle is converted to a mature graphene follicle which on rupturing will release the oocyte and the remaining part of the graphene follicle will form corpus luteum so these are the rhythmical changes occurring during each ovarian cycle which is roughly about 28 days okay so what happens in the ovarian cycle during each ovarian cycle 5 to 12 follicles will start maturing so during each cycle 5 to 12 follicles will start maturing but only one follicle will completely mature and reach the stage called graphene follicle and rest of the follicles will degenerate they will undergo atretic changes to form interstitial cells now how this follicle matures we know uh, there is primary oocyte surrounded by flat squamous epithelium it is called primordial follicle later on the flat epithelium becomes cu cuboidal and uh, cuboidal or columnar to form primary follicle then small cavities will develop within the follicle and the cavities will unite to form a large cavity called antrum folliculi so it is called tertiary uh, secondary follicle so when the cavity appears it is called secondary follicle and in this cavity we have the leaker folliculi it is a fluid filled space later on it is converted to mature graphene follicle so what is the structure of mature graphene follicle here we have the secondary oocyte just before ovulation the primary oocyte completes its first meiotic division and it will give rise to secondary oocyte and first polar body so here we have secondary oocyte the cell membrane of secondary oocyte is called white line membrane then there is peri white line space in which first polar body is there then we have the zona pellucida the follicular cells around the oocyte are known as cumulus ovaricus and rest of the follicular cells at the periphery are known as membrana granulosa and this cavity is known as antrum folliculi which is filled with fluid called leaker folliculi 
Now at the time of ovulation, what do you mean by ovulation? In the ovulation, there is a rupture of mature graphene follicle from the surface of ovary to release the secondary oocyte. So during ovulation, the secondary oocyte is released. Now if fertilization occurs, then the secondary oocyte will which is initially arrested in metaphase will complete the second meiotic division. It will form a mature ova which on fertilizing with spermatozoa will form zygote. But if fertilization does not occur, then the secondary oocyte will degenerate. So this is the fate of secondary oocyte. What happens with the wall of graphene follicle? So this wall of graphene follicle will collapse and it is now converted to corpus luteum. So the cells of the graphene follicle will enlarge. We know that there is membrana granulosa and it is surrounded by the stromal cells which forms theca interna and theca externa. In the graphene follicle, the theca interna is cellular and vascular and the outer theca externa is fibrous layer of the stroma. So in the corpus luteum, uh, the central cells will enlarge in size. They are filled with keratinoid pigments. It is yellow colored keratinoid pigment and the central cells are now known as granulosa luteal cells. Whereas in the periphery, the theca interna cells will also enlarge and they will form theca luteal cells. And the granular cells will arrange themselves in the columns. Initially, the granular layer is avascular, but the blood vessels from the theca luteum will enter into the granulosa layer and it will vascularize it. So in the corpus luteum now, you can see this is the corpus luteum. So in the central part, yellow pigmented large cells are there. They are forming granulosa luteal cells. They mainly secrete progesterone and small amount of uh, estrogen is secreted by it. And the theca luteal cells, which are forming the outer layer or peripheral part, they will secrete small amount of the estrogen okay so this corpus luteum will persist for about 12 to 15 12 to 14 days if fertilization does not occur or if pregnancy is not there then it will persist for 12 to 14 days it is called corpus luteum of menstruation and later on it will degenerate to form corpus albicans now, if there is fertilization of secondary oocyte and if implantation occurs, then the corpus luteum will secrete progesterone. The human chorionic gonadotrophin hormone will stay for, uh, it will uh, cause prolongation of the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum will stay for about four months of pregnancy. It is called corpus luteum of pregnancy. Okay. So it will stay for about four months if there is pregnancy and it will release progesterone. And after that, it will form a fibrous nodule called corpus albicans. So this is all about the follicles and their fate. Now we will see the role of hormones, which is again very, very important. So in the pre-ovulatory phase, means before ovulation, the follicular stimulating hormone is secreted by the anterior pituitary. And this follicular stimulating hormone will stimulate the maturation of primordial follicle to the graphene follicle. Okay, so in the pre-ovulatory phase, the follicle stimulating hormone will help in maturation of the follicles and this uh, pre-ovulatory phase is governed by estrogen so there is high level of estrogen now just before ovulation the estrogen will suppress follicle stimulating hormone and it will stimulate the luteinizing hormone so just before ovulation there is 
sudden rise in the luteinizing hormone which will help in the completion of first meiotic division and it will also help in the process of ovulation so ovulation occurs because of luteinizing hormone urge before ovulation so ovulation occurs 14 days prior to next menstrual bleeding so in the menstrual cycle the initial phase means pre ovulatory phase may vary the period may vary but post ovulatory phase is about 14 days so how to calculate ovulation it is 14 days prior to next menstrual cycle and uh, after ovulation this corpus luteum is formed which is mainly secreting the progesterone so in the post ovulatory phase the progesterone is dominating the post ovulatory cycle okay and this uh, progesterone will inhibit the follicle stimulating hormone and it will stimulate further the luteinizing hormone okay so fsh stimulates formation of luteinizing hormone through estrogen and luteinizing hormone depresses follicle stimulating hormone through progesterone so in the pre ovulatory phase we have dominance of estrogen in po post ovulatory phase we have dominance of progesterone in pre ovulatory phase fsh will uh, help in maturation of follicles in post ovulatory phase luteinizing hormone will help in maintenance of corpus luteum now what is the function of estrogen so this estrogen is mainly responsible for secondary sexual characters in females then uh, the libido for opposite sex then the proliferatory phase of the endometrium is also governed by the estrogen most important before ovulation the estrogen will suppress follicle stimulating hormone and it will stimulate luteinizing hormone so that ovulation will occur and in post ovulatory phase we have the progesterone which is dominating or it is raised so what is the function of progesterone it will uh, govern or it will help in the secretory phase of the endometrium so in if if the secondary oocyte is fertilized and if it is implanted in the endometrium then this endometrium is made favorable for implantation by the decidual reaction means in the secretory phase the endometrial cells they are rich in glycogen and lipids the endometrium is favorable to the implantation it will provide nutrition to the implanted embryo and again the progesterone will help in maintenance of pregnancy it will it will increase the tone of muscle it will prevent undue contractions and it will prevent expulsion of fetus and lastly it also stimulates the luteinizing hormone so these are the important functions of the progesterone menstrual cycle is the periodic or rhythmical change occurring during each month in the endometrial part of the uterus so before studying the menstrual cycle let us see the layers of the wall of uterus so the uterine wall is formed by three layers the innermost layer facing towards the uterine cavity is known as endometrium so this part the innermost part of the uterine wall is known as endometrium then the second layer is the muscular coat known as myometrium so this part of the uterine wall is myometrium it is the muscular coat and the outermost adventitial layer of the uterine wall the outermost layer is known as perimetrium thus the uterine wall is made up of three layers from inside outwards we have endometrium myometrium and the perimetrium then the endometrium is further divided in three layers so 
towards the basal part we have the stratum basal so this part of the endometrium is the stratum basal and the two layers facing towards the uterine cavity these two layers form stratum functional so the stratum functional is formed by stratum spongiosum so this is the stratum spongiosum layer and towards the lumen or towards the uterine cavity this part is known as stratum compactum thus the endometrium is formed by three layers that is stratum compactum then we have the stratum spongiosum and then there is stratum basal okay so there are three layers of endometrium so during the menstrual cycle the changes are taking place only in the upper two layers of endometrium thus the inner two layers of the endometrium are known as stratum functional okay so the inner two layers are stratum compactum and stratum spongiosum so these two layers undergo rhythmic changes during each menstrual cycle and thus they are known as stratum functional whereas no change occurs or the stratum basal does not take part in the changes occurring during menstrual cycle now let us see the composition of endometrium so this endometrium consists of lining epithelium so the lining epithelium of the endometrium is simple columnar it is lined by simple columnar epithelium then we have the uterine glands so these uterine glands are simple tubular so these uterine glands are simple tubular glands then we have the connective tissue in the form of stroma so there is stroma of the uterus and lastly we have the spiral arteries so the spiral arteries are present in stratum functional if we compare it with the stratum basal the stratum basal has straight blood vessels whereas in stratum functional they are spiral they are coiled okay so each menstrual cycle is on an average of 28 days menstrual cycle begins at puberty at the age of 10 to 13 years and the first occurrence of menstruation is called menarche the menstrual cycle terminates at the age of 45 to 50 years and termination of menstruation is called menopause so till the period when the menstrual cycle is there it is the reproductive period of of the females means starting from 10 to 13 years to 45 to 50 years the females are active in their reproductive um, part okay entire menstrual cycle can be divided in four phases depending on the changes occurring in the endometrium so there is menstrual phase then it the menstrual phase is followed by the proliferative phase and after proliferative phase we have secretory phase and just before the menstruation there is premenstrual phase so the menstrual phase is of 1 to 4 days means uh, it is on an average uh, uh, of 4 days so from first day of menstrual cycle to the fourth day of menstrual cycle is the menstrual phase so in the menstrual phase mainly there is removal or there is exfoliation of stratum functional so you can see this is the stratum basal and rest of the endometrium is called stratum functional so during menstrual phase there is exfoliation or there is sloughing of the stratum functional if there is absence of fertilization and the menstrual phase occurs due to sudden withdrawal of progesterone from the blood so we have seen in the post ovulatory phase in the ovarian cycle after shedding of the oocyte the rest of the uh, wall of the graafian follicle forms 
corpus luteum and this corpus luteum secretes progesterone which is present in the post ovulatory part now if pregnancy does not take place this corpus luteum degenerates so the progesterone level also decreases there is sudden uh, withdrawal of the progesterone due to degeneration of corpus luteum due to absence of fertilization so when the level of uh, of progesterone falls there is spasm of the coiled arteries and as the arteries undergo spasmodic uh, change means they are completely constricted so the blood supply to the stratum functional is hampered and there will be ischemia of functional layer and after ischemia there will be sloughing of the stratum functional so this is the menstrual phase so the first phase is menstrual phase extending from first to four days so there is hemorrhage or bleeding and it is mainly due to the exfoliation of stratum functional of the endometrium of uterine wall and it occurs if there is no fertilization and if there is degeneration of corpus luteum due to which there is sudden withdrawal of progesterone and due to uh, withdrawal of progesterone there is coiling of the blood vessels and the blood supply to stratum functional is not there it will undergo ischemic changes and it will be sloughed off so this is first phase it is followed by proliferative phase now in the proliferative phase there is repair or there is regeneration of the endometrium which was sloughed during menstrual phase so this proliferative phase of the menstrual cycle coincides with the follicular or pre ovulatory phase of ovarian cycle so in the pre ovulatory phase of the ovarian cycle estrogen is secreted by the growing ovarian follicles so this estrogen will act on the endometrium it will help in regeneration and repair of the endometrium so the thickness of endometrium will increase the spiral arteries will start elongating and they will try to reach the surface of endometrium and the glands the glands will also increase in number so this is the proliferative phase in which regeneration or repair of the endometrium occurs it is governed by estrogen secreted by the ovarian follicles there is mainly increase in the thickness of endometrium the spiral arteries will elongate and the glands will also increase in number after proliferative phase we have the secretory phase so in the secretory phase if we compare it with the ovarian cycle it coincides with the luteal phase of the ovarian cycle or the post ovulatory so in the secretory phase decidual reaction takes place means the lining epithelium is filled with glycogen and it is filled with lipids also the endometrial secretion the secretion from the uterine glands will increase and this phase is again governed by progesterone secreted by corpus luteum so in post ovulatory phase means after ovulation the corpus luteum is formed which will secrete progesterone and this progesterone will form secretory phase so in secretory phase the spiral arteries will also undergo coiling and mainly the function of secretory phase is to make the endometrium favorable for implantation in case fertilization occurs and in case there is implantation of the embryo then the embryo will get nutrition from the endometrial secretion and the decidual reaction is there which will help in providing nutrition to the endometrium so this secretory phase coincides with the post ovulatory phase or the luteal phase of the ovary so mainly during this phase decidual reaction occurs means there is deposition of or there is increased uh, in the glycogen and lipid content in the endometrial epithelium there is increased secretion 
from the endometrial gland and uh, progesterone is secreted mainly by the corpus luteum which is responsible for the secretory phase here the spiral arteries will also undergo coiling now the next phase is premenstrual phase which occurs just before the menstrual phase so in premenstrual phase again the bleeding uh, the blood supply to the endometrium is reduced because the spiral arteries become more and more coiled and there is spasmodic pain in the premenstrual phase it is immediately followed by the menstrual phase so these four phases occur in cyclical manner in each month so the menstrual cycle is roughly of 28 days menstrual phase from first to four days proliferative phase fifth to 14th day secretory phase is from 15th to 35th day and premenstrual phase is from 26th to 28th day of menstrual cycle let us correlate three events taking place simultaneously in synchronized manner first is ovarian cycle occurring in the ovary second is hormonal cycle and the third is menstrual cycle occurring in the endometrium of uterine wall so these three events are taking place hand in hand so they are in synchronized manner they are occurring in synchronized pattern so let us compare these three events so first we'll start with the ovarian cycle so we will divide the ovarian cycle in three parts the pre ovulatory part then the ovulation and post ovulatory part the pre ovulatory part of the ovarian cycle coincides with the with the proliferative phase of the uterine endometrium in the menstrual cycle whereas the post ovulatory part coincides with the secretory phase of the endometrium of uterine wall during the menstrual cycle okay so first we will see the ovarian cycle so in the pre ovulatory part mainly the estrogen is dominating and uh, there is raised estrogen and this estrogen is mainly secreted by the ovarian follicle so during each ovarian cycle about 5 to 12 ovarian follicles will start maturing they will start progressing so the primary follicle is a primordial follicle is converted to primary follicle then it's converted to secondary follicle secondary is then converted to a mature graafian follicle so this is the pre ovulatory phase in which the follicles will start developing or maturing so out of 5 to 12 follicle only one follicle will mature completely and rest of the follicles will undergo atretic changes okay so the mature graafian follicle has primary oocyte there is perivitelline space cumulus ovaricus there is membrana granulosa it is covered by theca interna and theca externa so this occurs during the pre ovulatory phase in the ovarian cycle the primordial follicle is now maturing to a graafian follicle only one follicle will mature and rest of the follicles will undergo atretic changes and these follicles will secrete estrogen okay so this estrogen will stimulate secretion of follicle stimulating hormone from the anterior lobe of pituitary this follicle stimulating hormone will help in the maturation of the follicle so this is about the pre ovulatory uh, part in the ovarian cycle now the same if we see Uh, the in the pre ovulatory part what changes are occurring in the endometrium of the uterus so here it is known as proliferative phase or it is also known as reparative phase so it follows the 
menstrual bleeding so immediately after the menstrual bleeding means during menses the endometrium is sloughed off it is exfoliated so now in the pre ovulatory part there will be repair of the endometrium the stratum functional of the endometrium will start regenerate regenerating so the blood vessels the spiral arteries will elongate they will try to reach up to the surface of the endometrium endometrium lining is again regenerated the endometrium glands will elongate stoma is regenerated so this is all under the influence of estrogen secreted by the ovarian follicle during pre ovulatory phase now what happens in the pre ovulatory phase there is maturation of the follicle uh, and the hormone which is dominant is estrogen and follicle stimulating hormone and in the endometrium there is reparative phase now just before ovulation the fsh will drop down estrogen will inhibit follicle stimulating hormone and it will stimulate luteinizing hormone just before ovulation so this luteinizing hormone will help in the ovulation so what happens just before ovulation fsh will drop down lh or luteinizing hormone will increase and the first meiotic division is completed just before ovulation so the primary oocyte after completing first meiotic division will form secondary oocyte and it will form the first polar body now let us see the fate of this secondary oocyte this secondary oocyte is arrested in the metaphase of second meiotic division now there are two possibilities if the secondary oocyte gets fertilized to form a zygote and then it it forms a embryo it will get implanted and if fertilization does not occur then the secondary oocyte will undergo atretic changes it will uh, undergo degeneration so this is what occurs just before ovulation and just after ovulation so just before ovulation fsh will drop down lh urge is there there is increase in lh and uh, there will be completion of first meiotic division so the primary oocyte will split to form secondary oocyte and first polar body primary oocyte was diploid in number it was having diploid number of chromosome whereas the secondary oocyte has haploid number of chromosome now what happens just after ovulation the secondary oocyte is shed off now what is ovulation ovulation is the rupture of graafian follicle from the surface of the ovary to release the secondary oocyte which is arrested in the metaphase of second meiotic division so after ovulation either fertilization will take place uh, so that pregnancy is there or the secondary oocyte will get degenerated after that the graafian follicle the wall of the graafian follicle is converted into corpus luteum so from here begins the post ovulatory phase of the ovary so in the post ovulatory phase the wall of the graafian follicle will collapse and it will form corpus luteum so in the graafian follicle we have the membrana granulosa formed by the follicular cells which will pre be present in the central part these cells will enlarge there is deposition of keratinoid or yellow pigmentation and now it is known as theca granulosa and the peripheral part is mainly formed by the theca interna so it is surrounded by theca interna of the stromal cells so the theca interna will form the theca luteal part of the corpus luteum again the point to be remembered is mem the membrana granulosa is a vascular whereas the theca interna has blood capillaries in it so the theca interna will vascularize the corpus luteum the blood vessels are arranged radially in the corpus luteum so now the corpus luteum has two parts the central part is known as theca granulosa and it is mainly formed by the follicular cells of membrana granulosa 
and the peripheral part is known as theca luteal cells and it is mainly formed by theca interna so the theca interna will release estrogen whereas the theca granulosa will secrete progesterone abundantly or dominantly and small amount of estrogen is also secreted now what is the fate of this corpus luteum if the secondary oocyte is not fertilized if it is not fertilized and there is no pregnancy then the corpus luteum is called corpus luteum of menstruation so it will persist for 12 to 14 days in the post ovulatory phase and then it will undergo fibroid degeneration to form corpus albicans so the corpus luteum of menstruation is present if there is no fertilization it will mainly secrete progesterone it governs the post ovulatory part of the ovarian cycle and the second possibility is if the secondary oocyte is fertilized and if there is uh, implantation of embryo so if there is pregnancy then this corpus luteum is called corpus luteum of pregnancy so it will persist for initial 4 months of the pregnancy and it will mainly secrete progesterone which will help in the maintenance of pregnancy and uh, thereafter the function of corpus luteum is after 4 months the placenta is fully developed it will secrete progesterone and the function of corpus luteum is taken over by the placenta and after 4 months the corpus luteum will degenerate and it will form corpus albicans so the corpus luteum of pregnancy is maintained or its stay is prolonged by the human chorionic gonadotrophin hormone secreted by the trophoblast of developing embryo so there are two types of corpus luteum corpus luteum of menstruation may persist 12 to 14 days after ovulation if there is no pregnancy it mainly secretes progesterone and if there is implantation of embryo then the corpus luteum will persist for initial 4 months of the pregnancy its main function is to secrete progesterone which will help in maintenance of pregnancy and thereafter it will undergo fibrinoid degeneration to form corpus albicans now let us see in the post ovulatory phase what changes are occurring in the stratum functional of endometrium of the uterus so uh, the post ovulatory phase is mainly governed by progesterone and in this phase it is also known as secretory phase so here the endometrium of the uterus is made favorable for implantation because just now ovulation has occurred and secondary oocyte is shed off and if there is fertilization and if there will occur implantation then the uterus should be favorable or it should be receptive for the embryo so for that what changes will occur the uterine endometrium is now converted into decidua so what is decidual reaction the endothelium lining the uterus is simple columnar so in post ovulatory phase there is increased deposition of glycogen and lipids in the uh, lining endothelium of the uterine endometrium so after that the glands will also enlarge and they become serrated so the glands are elongated and they become serrated the spiral arteries will also elongate they will reach up to the surface of the endometrium and they now become more and more coiled the stroma will also increase so this is the change occurring in the secretory phase now what happens after the secretory phase there will be menstruation so why menstruation occurs uh after 12 to 14 days of ovulation the corpus luteum of menstruation will degenerate so when the corpus luteum degenerates there will be no further secretion of progesterone and sudden withdrawal of progesterone will cause the menses to occur so there will be hemorrhage or menstrual bleeding occurring in the stratum uh 
functional of the endometrium in which the superficial layer or stratum functional which is formed by stratum compactum and stratum spongiosum is sloughed off it is completely exfoliated and this occurs due to sudden withdrawal of progesterone and this is because the corpus luteum has degenerated so this is the correlation between ovarian cycle and menstrual cycle now let us have a look on the clinical significance of reproductive cycle so if there is tremendous blood flow during menses it is called menorrhagia and abnormal abscess of menstruation is called a menorrhea then we use hormonal contraceptions uh, so what is the anatomical basis of this hormonal contraceptions mainly it has estrogen and progesterone in it so the progesterone will inhibit ovulation to occur by preventing the release of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone also it will make the uterine endometrium unfavorable to implantation the cervical mucus will get thickened so all these will prevent the implantation then there are some intrauterine contraceptive devices also for example copper tea is placed within the endo uh, within the uterine cavity so it will release copper and it will uh, obstruct the sperms also the copper released will prevent the entry of sperms it will prevent fertilization and it will also prevent implantation